All right, so where are these so-called chakra points, you said? In the spine. On the spine. But we see that the seven seals are on the back, on the back side, as it says in Revelation 5, right? Read mm -hmm. that again. Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. All right, on the back sealed with seven seals. So the one with the book in his right hand has seven seals on his book. But one way that some may interpret this is that even on the back of the, of the Messiah, you have seven seals. The body is the temple. We have seven seals here or seven steps to approach the most holy place. All right. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 3. First Corinthians three Let's start at eight. First Corinthians chapter three, starting at verse eight. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, Amen. and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, and ye are God's building. What? Ye are God's building. Ye, or you, are God's building. So we are God's building. God's building is the temple. First was the tabernacle, and then it started as, then it became the temple. And we are that building. Read. Ten. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. So it's not enough just to get knowledge, or just to get information, or to seek spiritual enlightenment. But how are you doing it? Are you going to Satan? Are you going to this wicked Egyptian third eye to seek enlightenment? Or are you going to the one who gives enlightenment, the one who opens the seals? Let's go back to Revelation 5. Let's start at 5 and let's read from 1 and read down again. Let's, let's get to this. Revelation chapter 5 beginning at verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. So the back has seven seals, right? We're dealing with seals. 2. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. Who, Who is, is worthy, worthy to, to open, open the, the book, book and, and to, to loose, loose the seals, seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Read that again. And no man in heaven and nor... Control <laughs> no. uh, who, who, who are the other ones? Um, polite. <laughs> is Polite worthy to open these seals? Is Eckhart Tolle, is Oprah Winfrey worthy to open these seals? Who are some of these other New Age false prophets? What's that name? Kundal the Kundalini spirit, they call it on, which is an anti-Messiah spirit. They call it on a Kundalini, which is a snake. A Kundalini spirit to come and enter their third eye. That's a snake. The Kundalini spirit is a serpent. They're calling on this for enlightenment. This is Satan. This is the knowledge of good and evil. Are they worthy to open the seven seals? No. Let's read and see who is worthy to open the seven seals. Four. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. So, Brother Polite's not worthy? No. Uh, uh, who, who else? Uh, who, I can't. Their names are me right now. None of these New Age people are worthy? Mm -mm. 
Mm. Okay. Five. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, Behold the, the lion of the, the tribe, tribe of Judah. Judah. The, the root of David hath prevailed, prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So how are you expecting Satan to open your third eye for enlightenment? And no one is worthy to open your third eye except Yehoshua, the Messiah. The seven seals hit are his to open. So when we are obedient and look at the seven seals to approach the throne of Yah, that is who opens our third eye and gives us spiritual enlightenment. So we have seven items here. What's the first item? Well, let's start at the bottom and work our way up. Then we're going to go from the, from the top and work our way back down. What's the first item we have here? The door. The door. The door. What does the door represent? Yehoshua. They all, these all represent Yehoshua in one way or another. He is perfect. He is seven. We have seven items here. This body here is the temple, and this is, has sevens in it also. But let's focus here first. The door. The door is what separates the light from the darkness or the field from the tent or the tabernacles, the world from the congregation. Once you go past that door, where are you? In the tabernacle. In the tabernacle. Mm -mm. In the go outside. Once you go outside these doors, where are you? In the world. You're in the world. You're in the field. The door is what separates light from darkness, good from evil, holy from unholy. Once you come out of these doors, you're into the world. You're in the unholy place. You come into the door, where are you? In the holy in the place. In the holy place. In the sanctuary. Psalm 77. Let's start at 11. Psalms chapter 77, begin at verse 11. I will remember the works of Yehoah. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will, I will meditate. meditate. I will meditate. On what? Also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O oh God, is in, the sanctuary. is in the sanctuary. So, if we want to practice meditation, spiritual enlightenment, opening of the third eye, we need to understand the sanctuary. That is how the seven seals in our body is open and made ready for the Holy Spirit. Who gives a damn about the Kundalini spirit? God damn the Kundalini spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to enter into this tabernacle, into this vessel. Read it again. Thy way. Uh, Psalm 77, 13. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? There is none as great as our God, and no one is worthy to open the seals. As they say, chakra points. No one's worthy to open those seven seals but our God. And he gives the Holy Spirit and he fills the tabernacle. And the tabernacle is our body, right? So, in um, their wicked meditations of uh, New Age philosophy, they have seven chakra points. And they also start from the bottom of a person and they work their way up. But that is a perversion of the tabernacle and proper meditation. Meditation is a reflection of God's way in the tabernacle. So, the first seal is the door. The door separates the saint from the world. It pulls us out of the world. After that, what do we have? The burnt altar. What happens on the burnt altar? That's the sacrifice. So once we come out of the world, we have to be willing to sacrifice everything in order 
to reach that holy place. To reach the throne of Yah, we have to be willing to sacrifice that which he says we have to sacrifice. Right? So we give up certain things. We come out of the unpure and the unholy and we sacrifice them. Even if they were things that we enjoy. But to be holy and to reach the presence, we got to sacrifice it. All right? So that's one. That's two. What's next? The brazen sea. What's the brazen sea? Do y'all know? The brazen sea, as a matter of fact, let's go here. Go to the, let's start at the right hand tab on the right side. Yeah. That is, again, a floor plan of the tabernacle. And at the bottom of the screen here is where a person would enter. I don't know why they don't have the door there, but this is where they would enter, and this is the holy place, and back behind here is the most holy place. So they would enter in upwards and then work their way forward. Okay, now go to the next one. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's start here. Right here. So, this is the door. This is the gate. Outside of that, you're in the world, right? But once we enter into these gates here, we come into the holy place, into the sanctuary. All right. Now click on the next one. And once we're in, we see now a high priest there. And what's he standing next to? That's a burnt altar. Mm -hmm. That's a burnt altar. That's where we must be willing to sacrifice. And if you notice, he's wearing a robe. What color is his robes? Purple, Purple. Or, blue. or blue. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that. And there's a very great significance to that. I know, is it easy to see? Well, when he said blue, I said maybe it is, but I thought purple at first. Mm -hmm. Y'all are both right. Y'all are both right. Okay. So, once we enter in the door, we have to be willing to sacrifice that which is unholy for God. And a lot right. of people don't get past that point. That's right. That's right. They can't even get barely get past the door when it's time to sacrifice and give up things for the Most High. They can't make the sacrifice. If you can't make the sacrifice, you can't even think about getting to the Most Holy Place. What's next? We said the brazen sea, right? Can you see that? Is there anybody to make that? Bigger? Yeah, click on it says visit the, no, the, in a, in a, on the web page, not the website, but. View image? Yeah. No, it's not much better. Okay. Well, the brazen sea is a sea, uh, is a, like a big, basically a bath. It's a big bath that's made of brass and it's right outside the uh, sanctuary. Okay? And its purpose is for washing. You must be baptized. You must cleanse yourself. So it was built and made of brass, though, and there's a spiritual significance to that. And it's made on a stand held by uh, 12 oxen. What do the oxes or the bulls represent? 12 pat patriarchs. That's right, the 12 patriarchs. And they hold up this basin of water, this huge basin of water. I forget how many thousands of baths that it contains in it, but it's thousands of it. And that's used for baptism, for washing and cleansing. So after we sacrifice and, and, and we give up for the Most High, then we are cleansed of our sins. Then we wash ourselves in the blood of the Lamb. Yes. No, I'm saying and that's, the la that's what you have to do before you cross into the holy place. Yes. You have to sacrifice, cleanse. Mm -hmm. Then you cross into the holy place, which I think for some people, that's where they get stuck, and that's where the revelations stop. Mm, explain what you mean. Um, because it takes, um, it takes a spiritual cleanliness and clarity to... Oh, sorry. <laughs> To be able to um, receive, you know, additional knowledge of the word. Mm. 
And so, you know, oftentimes as we, you know, and I'll just use YouTube as an example, many people seem to be stuck at a place that they've been in for as many years as I've been watching YouTube. Their message hasn't changed. Their message hasn't grown. And I'm just looking at this and that, you know, somewhere they, they've stopped and they haven't completed that process between the sacrifice and the seed, the burnt altar and the brazen seed to cross into the holy place to grow to that next step of revelations. Amen. Hallelujah. So if they haven't, because you got some congregations that teach against baptizing. Yes. That it's a sin or a wicked thing to baptize. But you can't get to the holy place without baptism. You can't do it. So that's because they're full of darkness. They're filled with demons. And so those demons or that darkness on them doesn't want them to be clean. So they teach against baptism. So that they can stay, in, but that allows them, that forces them to stay in that place that they've been in. No matter how many years they've been in the truth, they have not grown. Because they're dirty. Spiritually. Alright? So what do we have next? That's three, right? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. What do we have? The menorah. The menorah. The menorah. Actually, I would have preferred that I put the showbread first before the menorah. And then we have, let's, let's do showbread. The showbread is, let's, you pull it up there. The showbread is a table that, that's within the holy place, okay? This table has two uh, stacks of bread on it, all right? See if you can zoom in there if it comes in clip. Yeah, I can get it on okay. the camera. There you'll see a picture of priests. If you look at the bread, it's like in the square, it's like a square-shaped loaf. And it almost looks like a scroll. Can you see it? It looks like two sides folded. Because the bread is the word. So once you're willing to separate from the world, sacrifice for God, and wash and turn away from your sin, then he can start feeding you the word. He can start giving you that revelation of the word. That's why they never get deeper understanding, like you said, because they can't even enter and get eat the show bread. If how many stacks of bread are on? Two. Hmm. I'm gonna guess. Two stacks. Well, two two stacks. Two stacks. Why? So you've got some Israelites who say, oh, no, I'm just going to eat one stack. Mm -hmm. Then you got Christians who say, oh, I'll eat the other stack. But nine of them are partaking at the full table. His way is in the sanctuary. This is the way to meditate and open the third eye in righteousness. So they can't eat and partake of the showbread table. The showbread table is holy food. Most holy food, okay, that not just anyone can eat. And they have omitted themselves from being able to eat this bread because they're unclean. If you're not clean, you can't enter into the sanctuary to even eat it. And again, this is all a reflection of the human body, and we're going to get to that. Next we have the menorah. Let's do number four. What is the menorah? It's like the seven candles, the seven candlesticks. Yes. It's the light. It's the light of the holy place. It is what gives light inside of the sanctuary. Right? So once you eat that word, once you eat, you're partaking of this bread, Old Testament, New Testament, you should be a light to the people in your, in, in your life. Let's go to uh, Matthew. Six, I believe. Ye 
are the light of the world, right? Mm-hmm. 22. 22. So that's the that's the eye. Where is that? Yeah, the light of the world. It might be five actually. Yes, Matthew 5 and 14. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So you have some people who start coming into the truth and getting the light out of the word and then they want to hide that light. Do you want to hide the light that you have? God is giving you the light to shine it where? On the world. In the darkness. On the world. How was the world first formed? In darkness. In darkness. Without form and void. Darkness was in the world. Then Yehoshua said what? Let there be light. Let there be light. You eat that bread. You eat those two stacks. You become the light. And you are supposed to shine that light. And then you can take another step closer towards that throne. All right. Read. 15. Uh, Matthew 5, verse 15. Neither do men light a candle and or put it a under. A candle is the menorah. So the candle is the menorah here. And put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. So this menorah lights up the whole house. And this menorah is actually a part of the body. And through understanding this, we can meditate, we can open the third eye in righteousness. Yehoshua will actually open the third eye because he is the only one worthy to open it up. He opens those seven seals in our bodies. Okay? Go ahead. 16. 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. So we become that light. We become the menorah when we eat the daily bread. Okay? So what is that? We got five and six. What's next? Incense. The altar of incense. What is the altar of incense? Uh, doesn't it contain the um, the the Ten Commandments? Not quite. It's the Ark. Oh, yeah. Mhm. Mm That's a spirit? The kind Holy of. Spirit. I do know that scripture that talks about um, that our lives, our bodies are supposed to be a sweet smelling fragrance into your whole Our body. bodies? Our lives. Our lives? Mm -hmm. Not I That's know. not quite our lives, but you're our very body. close. Okay. Oh, Revelation wow. 5. Let's go back to Revelation 5. Who was worthy to open these seals? The Lion of Judah. The Lion of Judah. Revelation 5. And let's start at 6 now. Revelation chapter 5, beginning at verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. Having seven horns and seven eyes. So we which, see again, we see that seven, that perfection, right? Which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Mm -hmm. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and, and the four, four and twenty, and 20 elders, elders fell, fell down, down before, before the Lamb. Land. Having every one of them hearts and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. So the altar of incense represents the prayers of the saints. So when we come out of the world, sacrifice for the Most High, wash ourselves, cleanse ourselves of sin, then we can enter the holy place. 
we begin to eat the word, the Old Testament, the New Testament, we become a light unto the world. And then our prayers are heard before the Most High God. When you speak, there's power in your prayer, in your words. How many Israelites even pray? And if they pray, how many of them even have power? Their offering, their altar of incense has no smoke. It's not a sweet smelling savor. You got whole camps who do nothing but use profanity and cuss. And, and, and blaspheme and speak all kinds of wickedness. Will their offering of incense be a sweet smelling savor or will it be a stench? stench. James 4. Actually, James 3. Hmm. 8. James chapter 3. Well, actually, let's start, at, let's start at 6. Starting at verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell. Mm -hmm. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But, but the, the tongue, tongue can, can no man tame. tame. It, it is, is an, an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Mm. Therewith we bless, bless God, we bless God, even, even the, the Father, Father, and therewith curse we men. men which, which are, are made after the similitude of God. God. Out, Out of the, the same mouth proceed the blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought so not to be. be. So how can our offering of incense be a sweet-smelling savor if we're blessing and cursing out of the same mouth? Psalm 77, 13 again. Psalm chapter 77, verse 13. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Amen. 12 and 13. Psalm, Psalm 77, 3. 12 and 13. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of all thy doings. So if we want to med meditate and gain spiritual enlightenment, go ahead. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. And we have to understand the sanctuary. And in the sanctuary is an incense of prayers, of a sweet-smelling savor. And we have whole congregations in Israel cursing people out in the street, using profanity, wishing death on people, doing all kinds of blaspheming from their mouth. Their altar of incense is a stench before the Most High God. It smells like dumb. And anyone like that who wants to come before the presence, what do you think happens? They're cast out of the sanctuary. So that's number six. And what's the last one we have here? The Ark, the Ark of the Covenant. Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant, which is number seven. Do you want them to see the altar? Yes, you can go there quickly. Here we see an illustration of a priest with the altar of incense right before the veil into the Holy of Holies. Oh, it's, I've got a glare. I can't really see. Okay. Well, don't, you know, it's all right. Okay. Once our prayers are heard and they're received and accepted, then... And only then can we enter into the most holy place. Where the most holy place is what? Uh, the Ark. The Ark of the Covenant, the very throne of Yah Himself. The throne of the Most High God. When our prayers are acceptable because we've been purified through 
these uh, processes of refinement, then only then are we made worthy to stand before the Son of Man in his holy temple.